Hello, this is David Wormsley. Last year, I published a video post called Working Smarter with WordPress Images. And this was a collection of tips that I'd collected and were implementing to speed up my workflow. And it included a script that were automatically adding SEO image metadata to the WordPress image fields. And I think the big thing for me last year was that I added via WordPress plugin a service, which in my case was short pixel to be able to optimize my images automatically. Of course, there are other services out there. I also had some other tips on renaming custom thumbnails to make it easier for clients to understand and audition in images. All of these are great, but I still had a big issue with my images. And this would often surface when a client would ask me about uploading their own images, say for blog posts. So what I would typically do is to send them a series of links so they can could find free to use image libraries out there such as Unsplash, Pexel and Pixel Bay. These all have Creative Commons zero licenses so you can do what you like with the images. But still I would need to explain what size they needed to download. And so often even though WordPress would be set up to crop their images for them, they wouldn't necessarily crop the subject matter well. So if they didn't have a cropping tool, then I would need to give them a link to another free service online and explain how to use that and what size image to download again. And finally, to make my SEO script work, I would need to remind them to name their file as something that was SEO friendly and not to leave spaces in between names. So all of this process is pretty cumbersome, um, not just for them, but for me too. Well, I think I may have found my solution, which is a new free plugin on the WordPress repository by Stencil. Now, Stencil is a service which is a paid service, but they do have a free offering. If you're one of the lucky people who've already signed up to Stencil and have lifetime access, you're going to be very excited by this. I still think the free service is really useful for clients in particular. And now with this plugin, and for my use, I would be happy to pay the annual subscriptions on this service. There's a lot of competition in this area. So online services where they allow you to create your images, use most of them are using the now millions of good quality photos that are online. So there's a couple of million of those. They've got also icon, they've got some templates on their paid service and quotes that you can add. And Stencil, I think really when it came out was largely aimed at the social media. So you can crop all of your images and make different crop versions of the same kind of image to suit the social media platforms you want to send the images to and it will do it from the interface. And for me, out of all of the sort of similar tools like this, Stencil had got it right. They just got the right amount of power to do some really kind of cool things with your images but the user interface is so simple to use. So I really, really liked it. I've been using it over a couple of years, but I've not been using it that much because my need for social media images have been minor. And when it comes to WordPress, even though they've got a extension for Google Chrome that I could use, I still would need to make the images sign in, make the images, download those, rename them and upload them to WordPress. So this plugin solves this, it's now already there. Let me just quickly talk a bit about the pricing here because this is important. On the free service for clients, so there's only 10 images per month that they can get. There's no access to the templates and there is a limit on the photos and the icons. That is that when you do a search, it finds a lot of great ones. If you scroll down, you'll find that some of those images say you upgrade to. But in all honesty, you can kind of get around that one by making your search a little bit more specific. It will kind of rise to the top. So you can probably get around that limitation, but no templates. You can also, and I don't know if this applies each month, there is the offer if you promote them or share them to, I think, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn 
they will give you three extra images. So that's another nine images you could add at least in the first month. So I think this is probably enough for most, but I think if anybody's got the use for WordPress plus social media, what better way to do it? Because if you start with your images while you're working in WordPress, you can then change those images to different size versions of those to promote to your social media. And this is always the big thing that I'm trying to get over to clients is that they probably want to invest their time into something they own themselves, their own blog post, and then share out to the social media and not the other way. The idea is to send the traffic from social media to your site, not the other way around. So I think it kind of reinforces that. So it's another reason why I quite like the idea of installing this plugin on every one of my client sites so I can use it and they can sign up as well. So let me just go over to a blog post which I created so I can remind myself what I need to say. So the first thing is that the plugin will compress the images that you make and add them to your WordPress media library. So they're not hosting them for you. There is a maximum width size, which is 1920 pixels, which is perfectly fine for me. In fact, I asked them if they'd move it from 1800 to this because they have to compress and upload these images to you the time that it would take to do that. So I think this is a good thing. It works in the back end and also what they've added, and I'm so impressed with them because a number of people requested this, including me, that there is front end page builder support. So they've added that to Beaver Builder, which I use Elementor and Divi as well. Maybe they will add more as they requested, but they did this literally in a couple of days with all of those. I've tested it with Beaver Builder and it's fine with the third party add-ons and also when a client has a restricted view. You can, let me just go over to a post here so I can just show you in the back end. So once you've got it installed, once you add media, it's just gonna, I've gone straight to it because I was in there, but it's just got a tab and you're in stencil here and you can start to select things. If you're on the free version of this one, you have to save before you can load it to your media library. But if you're unlimited, then you can just do that at any point here. And when you click on this, it sets something off. I don't know if it's gonna, oh, okay. I've already started to load this. This is one of the other features I particularly like because I was having problems with people not, or rather leaving too many spaces when they name their images. You cannot go wrong with the system here. When you name the image, it will give, that will be the file name for the image. And if you type in anything with spaces, it adds the dashes for you automatically. So it's now a foolproof system for clients. They just select their image and while I'm here, I'll just cover the other points that I can remember. What I really like about it is that even on the free side, you can add in, as I've done here, your own custom image sizes. So I'm going to do a video for the clients to just explain how they can find on their install, what are the dimensions of the images that they might want to set up. There's also similar, let me just go and click on this when it comes to being able to store color palette so I shall show them as well how to find the hexadecimal value so they can add in the colors and not kind of have those issues as well so pretty cool stuff and I've just lost the plot let me go back to my list oh no let me just go and show you on beaver builder so here it is on the front end I'm in a restricted access view here and I'm in a row and there's my background image if I want to change that I just go here and I'm Back to my image. Okay, back to the article. You can add in your own fonts, but that's on the paid service. If you're using the free, you've got what they give you, which has the most popular, I should say Google header fonts. I shall change that before I publish. Um, they're there. So I think it's probably enough. And in most cases, I don't think for the use I'm thinking of that you're really going to do that much where you add text to the images. As I've mentioned here, it's foolproof when it comes to changing the file name. I've already mentioned that it gives you 10 images and that you can get more. And yeah, what I like as well about this, once I've installed this on other client sites or if I'm working on multiple sites at the same time, 
it's installed, but while I'm logged into Stencil in my browser, I'm going to be able to move backwards and forwards from different sites and still use the service. And that would be true for clients. And clients, of course, are going to have their own login. It's fairly easy to just sign up to them and get started. And they're not going to get my service. They'll get their own service on this same install. So I think I've probably covered everything that I need to. I just need to say a thanks to the stencil people because they've accommodated in no time everything I've requested and it seems what everybody else has requested. So I do like their service. This is fabulous as far as I'm concerned. I need to thank Jay Oki of Launch Digital because he posted this into the WP Builds podcast Facebook group. Else otherwise I wouldn't have known about it. So thank you very much. I hope this video was useful. If you did find it useful, well then please give me a thumbs up because it really encourages me to make more of these and consider subscribing to the channel if you like these kind of videos. Anyway, thank you for listening to me. I hope you have a great day and hope to talk again to you soon. Bye-bye.